Okay, here we go. Fine. Here your screen open. Yeah, yeah. So guys, I hope everyone is able to uh, see my respective screen for now. Okay. Yeah. So over here, guys, this is the Google Collab. If you want, I'll be going ahead and I'll be once again helping you to identify the same. Okay. So you just need to go ahead and search for Google Collab, right? And the first link that is welcome to Google Collab Avatary. You have to go ahead and you have to navigate on to this end. Yes, Rajan. Right. So over here, guys, there will be some of my tasks that will be there up. Okay, so if you want to go ahead, if you want to launch a new notebook, just click on file, click on on your book, and you will be redirected. Atharva, Atharva, I'm very sorry. Uh, your voice is very low, actually. Okay, just give me a moment. Okay, so what about others, guys? Are you able to hear me right, right away? Are you facing any of the issues? Everyone? All well, all clear, that's cool, Rajan. What about others? That's cool, Navya. Okay. I hope Kamal now it's clear up. Guys, if you if you are not able to see the screen or if you are not able to listen the voice or if you are facing any technical issues, please uh, please inform to author in the chat window, or you can unmute yourself and inform to author. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you. that's cool. So over here, guys, now this will be your respective Python platform, everyone. I hope we all are onto the same page. Yes? So over here, guys, now what we'll be doing up, uh, first of all, let me go ahead and give you an overview, right? So this is your IPYNB format, fine? So everyone try to understand what is this. So all your Python files will be having two format, right? Which is known as extension. So one is dot .py. Okay. And the other one is dot .ipynb. Fine. So whenever you are using any of the Python notebook, so it is always be dot IPYNB. Okay. So later on, I'll be helping you to know that what these uh, files means, but as a data science professional, you all will be seeing whenever there is any file with dot py dot IPYNB. So it's for sure that it's related to Python. Now over here, you can already see that it's in dot IPYNB, right? So you, if you want, you can click over here. It is untitled 37. You can rename this file. Okay. So I'll be saying that this is my Python demo one. Okay. Clear. So you can give any name of your choice. Just make sure that dot IPYNB will be there. It's a format of the file, right? Now over here, you will be having a file option. You can open uh, any of the notebook, right? Later on, we will be using it up. You can go ahead, you can download this file in IPYNB or PY format. All these formats will be there up. You can rename this file, right? You can save this file. So all these are options will be available over here, fine? Then these will be the certain runtime. As I've already told you that whenever you need to run, any of the respective codes you need resources just refer the example that i have given for the uh, vehicle car and the fuel right without fuel you cannot run your car okay similarly without these resources right ram disk space processor you cannot run python code these need heavy resources right so we are having these resources from cloud itself pretty simple 
okay so over here you have the runtime also you can uh, click over here right and if you want you can go ahead and you can click on connect fine so if you will be connecting which means that you are giving fuel to this platform so that you can execute all your python codes and queries fine so are you all able to rename your file and connect to the resources everyone that's cool Okay, so now guys over here, this will be known as your input cell that we have already known. Okay, if you want, you can go ahead and you can add n number of code cell of your choice, right? You just need to click on code and you will be getting good number of codes over here. Very, very easy. Okay. Now these code cells will be acting as the boxes which will be taking your Python codes. Okay. Now guys, let's go ahead and let's start from very basic. Okay. So today we are going ahead. Let me just increase the font size so that all of you can have a great look. Yeah. Now I think it's pretty better. Okay. So over here, if you want to write anything, you can use an hash symbol. So what is this hash symbol? Hash symbol is connect this respective comment. Okay. So whatever the thing you are writing up. I'm writing hello. I'm new to Python. Fine. So if I click on run button, you can see that there is nothing that will be included up fine. Everything considered over here will not be included in the execution part. So let, it, let, let me make it very clear, right? What is this comment used for fine? So many times whenever you are working with any of the programming language guys, it is very, very important that you also needs to write some comment. Why? so that your team can understand any of the person who will be seeing your code can understand that what are the tasks or if you want to write any of the additional information so you can give any of the text fine let's say okay if i don't write this with hash symbol so what do you think what will happen everyone if i directly execute it if i directly click on run button so you will be seeing the error why because now this thing has been taken as Python code. Okay. And this is invalid syntax. Right. So whenever you are writing an hash over here, which means that Python will not include anything after this hash symbol. So you can give anything of your choice, any random thing as well. No worries about it. Okay. But yes, if you are not writing hash symbol, everything in this input cell will be considered as a python code okay so you will be having unnecessary errors right so this is quite a small thing that a person needs to understand right so why it will be used for an example let's say i want to print a new line that hello everyone Okay. So now it's a proper syntax part. You have round brackets, you have a print command. So Python will take it up and will give you the output. No errors. Are you getting me? But if you don't have any proper Python code, you are simply giving us text like this. Then it will give you syntax error that this is the not right syntax. Okay. So if just consider an example over here, you and me will be communicating in English language. Pretty simple. You also understand English. I also understand English. And then we will be having a communication established up, right? But for an example, if, if I start uh, speaking in uh, French language, so will you able to understand guys? No, 
Why? Because that is not the language, that is not the syntax of communication. Right? Similarly, over here, Python will only understand Python code. This platform will always understand Python code. If you write anything without proper spacing, without proper format, without proper syntax, it will give you error. Are you able to understand? Right? So if you want to write anything like normal text or something, just use a hash symbol. It is known as comment. So now Python will not take it as a respective code. It will simply skip it from executing it up. Okay, it's a comment part, right? Not that important, but yes, once we are onto the code, it is very, very important. Fine. Okay. So are you able to understand comment? Can I have your quick responses guys, everyone? That's cool. Shrikant, Navya. That's cool. Yeshwan, Devi, fine. So now guys, let's do one thing. Let's start from very basic. First of all, let me talk about what is Python. Okay. So Python isn't scripting language. Fine. Or you can say isn't general purpose programming language. So how many of you will be learning first time any programming language? Can I have your responses? Just write F, F in the chat section. That's cool. So it will be an amazing experience guys. Don't worry about it. Just try to follow all the things that we are doing up, right? And you will be learning it up. It's very, very amazing thing. And in today's world, it is very important for any of the person to at least know how to communicate with machine. And this programming language is the communication channel, right? So as you and me are communicating in English, so how you communicate with machine? Programming languages are only the ways how you can train your machine, how you can use your machine, fine? So Python is a general purpose programming language. Okay. It will be used in many formats. Fine. It will be used in web applications or web development. Okay. If, uh, if you want to develop any of the product and software, then also you can use Python. So product development. Fine. It will be also using in cybersecurity. And one of the greatest usage is in the field of data analytics and data science. Okay. Now guys over here, let's understand one thing that we also have a good number of other languages, right? So what are the other languages guys? Let me also give you the name. So you have heard somewhere about that Java is there. Fine. C is there. C++ is there. R is there. Ruby is there. Fine. Etc. In the world, there will be a good number of pro other programming language. Fine. But why the data analytics and data science professionals love Python? Fine. So there will be some features of Python that we are going to understand. Fine. So you all will be experiencing the same in some time. So what are the features of Python? Why it is very popular in the world, right? So if I'll be giving you some of the facts, so guys, a uh, big tech giant, even Google have their 95% of the product, which are based on top of Python, right? So more than 95% product of uh, Google, right? You have uh, YouTube, you have Instagram, you have uh, their respective server sites part, right? They will be having 95% of the product to be built it up in Python. Okay. Even their respective recommendation engines. Okay. There, uh, you can say all the meta and fang organizations, right? Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, 
they will be having a good usage of uh, python in their app right so if it is quite popular so for sure there will be good some uh, some good reasons behind it right yes or no i hope everyone agrees with me that if it is quite popular so for sure there will be something behind it right otherwise they can also go ahead and use a good number of other languages right and why data science uh, the people who have very logical mind data analytics people why they only prefer python okay so guys over here there will be good number of features fine and the first thing that you will be experiencing by your own end and why i have started from python okay so the first thing is that it is easy to learn and a readable language okay now what is readable language guys later you will be understanding yes correct shikar user friendly uh, for, for sure it will be an user friendly interface as you can see google collab how easy it is right so again that is also one of the respective feature that you will be having up fine so it is easy to learn you will be coming up uh, after a couple of more minutes that how you can easily able to see the syntaxes how you can easily able to build your own logic fine and it's a readable language so many of the commands of python looks like commands or uh, having the resemblance of real world one is the print command okay similarly you have delete command you have a uh, insert command right so these are the certain commands which have the real resemblance of, of of the words that we are using in day to day english that's why it is very readable language fine now guys the other thing it is open source fine now what is open source that it's worldwide and free sort of language to be used for all the respective tasks fine so it's open source and entirely free you don't need to go ahead and you don't need to have any of the licenses to be purchased up fine and the third one guys the large libraries support which is very very important and that's why this is the favorite tool for data science and analytics people fine so it is having large library support now what are libraries guys fine so these are the respective i'll be talking about collection of pre built functions okay so this libraries are the respective collections of these inbuilt functionalities right so if you want to do anything you don't have to write everything from scratch okay you already have some inbuilt function if you want to calculate sum if you want to do some aggregate operations min functions max functions machine learning algorithms right uh, mathematical formulas you don't need to write anything from scratch you only take one word into the consideration and you will be having the calculation very easy language why because it already have the large library support has already been given by shikhar fine so for now guys these are the three important features and later on you will be coming across many of the other tech oriented features fine so are you all uh, getting it up for now everyone that what is python actually called right so it's a programming language right and these are the respective features anyone is having any of the issues please let me know right away very simple thing now we are going on to the hands on part fast school i got response from shikhar what about others are fakshay akshay kumar devi 
Navya Ranjan, right? So what is the base idea of having any of the programming language? You can simply say that programming language simply helps to communicate with machine and helps to do the task. Okay. Now tell me one thing guys, as a human being, for all the hard work and or, or for all the respective For sure, Arif, pretty fine. Nobody's about it, right? So just try to understand uh, because it's first time for many of the people that what is programming language, right? So with this uh, with this uh, respective uh, analogy, you all will be able to understand, fine? That what is a programming language? Programming language is a way to communicate with machine and then directing machine to do the task. Now, I hope everyone of you agree that a uh, machine can do better task from human at least the labor work yes or no how many of you agree yes for sure arif why not right so analytics is a very important component of mba that's cool so yes if i if i want to write That's exactly, exactly correct. Yes. Right. So now guys, what is Python? Python will be communicating your instruction, right? What you want to give machine and then accordingly machine can do the task. Fine. This is a programming language and Python is one sort of programming language, right? So web development, because in web development also we need some machine work in product development also. And in data analytics and data science also, we need machine resources. Why? Because as a human, you cannot do the all task, right? Just if I'll be asking you that, Hey guys, what you need to do, you need to go ahead and you need to, uh, do this multiplication part, a very small example. I'll be explaining you very small example, guys, even your calculator is a, is a respective machine using a programming language in the back end. Okay. Yeah. So how much time you will be required up to do the operations without calculator? Because calculator is also a machine. If I will be simply asking you, Hey guys, just help me to calculate this respective thing. What will be the answer of this respective thing or respective expression? So it will be time taking for all of you. Yes or no. At least you will be taking two minutes, five minutes. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, right? But you can see that machine have a good resource. Okay. And the moment I execute it up, you will be seeing the result in front of us in fractions of second, right? So that's why programming language is very important in any of the process in around the world. Why? Because you can see that it do fast and error free operations, right? It will be saving time for sure. It will be saving time. And then it also saves resources, fine. So that is the important thing. Now guys, this calculation is not the limit of the machine. No. All the machine, your computer, why we say, say your laptop, your computer is very powerful machine. Not for this calculation, right? Even you can do wonders from your machine by communicating your instruction that, hey machine, I want this, right? And for that communication, you need to have a mediator. You need to have a programming language. And for now that is Python, okay? And in data analytics, why we are using a Python because we need to calculate some of the calculations. So we are not mathematicians. You and me are not mathematicians, but my machine is a mathematician. So all the calculation part will be done by machine. I'll be only directing it. Are you understanding the connection? 
what's the connection between a machine uh, and and data analytics and a programming language why we want it because we want fast operation and if we want uh, if we do fast operation we can do more analytics right because in real world guys you will be dealing with data which is having one more than 1 lakh records right so if i say hey guys i have the data of uh, for an example 10 million people okay and i have their monthly salary okay now i want to calculate what is the average salary fine this is an analytics part i want to understand that what is the average salary of, of, of these 10 million people right so how much time you all will be taking to calculate the average salary guys first of all you have to add 10 million records you have to divide it by 10 million and then you are getting the average salary yes or no so it is very consuming time consuming task and very hectic so why should not to use machines if we have powerful processors if we have powerful machines right so i can do this task highlighted task in couple of second from my python that's why i want python so i hope now everyone is uh, going ahead and everyone is uh, establishing up the connections yes or no guys That's cool, Akshay. Yashwant, Shrikant, Uday. Uh, what about Arif Khan? That's cool. Right? Everyone. So this is the important part. Fine? Now, guys, let's go ahead and let's start everything from very scratch. Okay? So whenever we are uh, learning any of the language, so what we all have uh, first learned, we have learned the alphabet. Yes or no? So today we will be learning the alphabets of programming language. Why? Because we are starting everything from very scratch, very beginning. So the first thing that we will be having over here will be variable that we are understanding. Then guys, we will be going ahead with the respective concept of storing information then accessing information right and then we are simply being understanding some of the naming convention in python right so these will be the three things that we'll be understanding today right and it will be very fun guys trust me okay so let's go ahead and let's start it up for now so the first thing that I'll be giving you is a variable. Now, what is variable? Right? So variable is the most fundamental and basic unit of uh, programming language guys. Okay. So if I want to give the instruction to my machine, I will be giving some information, right? So what is variable? Just consider variable R neutral container helping python to store the information okay so these are acting as an identifier fine so if i want to go ahead right let's say if i uh, for now i have all my a uh, student with me fine so a student is generic part right if i want to specifically ask anything from any one of you so i'll be not saying hey student just tell me this thing right what i'll be doing up i'll be taking my name i'll be taking devi i'll be saying akshay i'll be saying arif i'll be saying navya i'll be saying divya right so all these names will identify you your individuality yes or no right you all will be identified by your name okay so what are variable guys in python variable are the name of the information fine 
these are the containers in which we are storing up the information right let me show you one thing if i want to store any of the information so first of all i will be assigning a variable so variable can be anything it can be an any alphabet right it can be anything of your name it can any anything of your choice right so even i can have the alphabet of my own name right so i'll be saying athar okay so this is variable now what it is identifying let's say it is identifying an information as 100 are you getting me so what are variable variable are neutral container fine in which you can store any information of your choice so for now i'll be storing 100 right let me run it now guys just tell me if i execute only a third so what will be the output i'll be getting on screen tell me if i simply execute a third what will be the output i'll be getting on screen everyone So if I execute it up, you can see now a third is identifying information 100. Are you getting this everyone? That what is a variable? Variable is the respective container in which you can store any of the information. So this time a third is a container in which 100 will be stored up. Right? Similarly, you can have any, any information of your choice. Right. So what will be the respective thing? What will be the type of the information? Let me go ahead and let me discuss further guys. Why? Because variable without information is useless. Right. So what you will be do with blank container, right? Ultimately in a programming language, you will be working with information. So what type of information we have in Python or in any of the programming language, any guesses guys? Anyone have any of the guesses that what type of information we basically used in any of the programming language? You can have your responses onto the uh, chat section. Okay. So let me give you the understanding for now. What will be the type of information? Correct, Shikhar. Right. So over here, guys, the first thing that we will be having up. Uh, Shikhar, in Python, we don't have character. Okay. So character we have in C and C++. Are you getting me? In Python, we don't have character. Okay. Yeah. So this is one of the interview question uh, that people generally ask to check your basic Python, Python proficiency. Okay. Yeah. So guys, uh, there will be broadly two type of information. Everyone agrees with me. First one is numeric. Yes, I can have numbers for, for any of the data. I can have numbers or either I can have the textual information. Only these two types of information exist. Yes or no. Right. So either you will be having numbers or you will be having any of the textual information. Later on, you will be coming on to the bool and all those part, right? So over here, numeric information or numerical values. Right? You will be having two type of classification. So first one is known as integer. Everyone, please, uh, be focused over here because it is very important, right? So this is known as integer in short abbreviation. It is known as int. Now, what is this numeric information integer, right? So all the whole numbers, are called integer guys, no matter negative or positive, right? So 45 is a whole number. Whole number means number which don't have any of the decimal, right? Minus three, 
minus 87, right? All the numbers which are whole numbers from positive and negative, both will be called called as integer, right? So all will be agree me uh, agree with me that uh, these are the whole numbers, positive and negative, uh, which will be considered as integer. Fine. After that, what you will be having up, guys? The next category of a numeric information is float. You can say it's floating point number. Or in short abbreviation, it is known as float. So what are these numbers? These are the numbers which have decimal or fractions associated with them. Okay. For an example, you have 34, uh, 4.67, 4.2, right? Any of the number which have this decimal associated with it, right? Or 1.5667, right? So any number which have a decimal associated with it is known as your respective floating point number or float. Are you getting me everyone that numeric information will be divided in two part. One is integer known as int, which is having all the positive and negative whole numbers, right? Floating point or float is simply been the decimal or fraction numeric information like 34.67 or any number having a decimal associated with it. Pretty simple, right? All clear with me, everyone. Pretty simple, right? Now, after that, what you will be having up, you have your textual information, right? Now, over here, it is very interesting. So all the respective uh, collections of characters, right? As we have, will be called as string. So a string will be the respective format that we have for our textual information, right? So how it will be defined up? Everyone just have a look. That string will be defined in single quotes. You can have any text of your choice. Hello, right? Or you can use double quotes. You can have any text of your choice. So this is the format how you are defining up any of the textual information, right? It can be name, email, address, any sort of thing that you want to give will be on string. So even a single character will be a string. Okay. I hope it's clear Shikhar, right? So you will be able to check the data type also. Fine. So this is the, uh, you can say uh, majorly dealt information over here. Numeric will be integer float and textual will only be string, right? That's cool. So now guys over here, let's define a variable. So I'll be naming this variable as uh, V. So V is a variable which is having the respective number as 56 to be assigned with it. So if I execute it up, now you can have a look that V is holding up 56, right? Everyone. So if you want to check, see how smart Python is, you can use your first inbuilt function guys, everyone. So there is an inbuilt function type. In type, if you give the variable, the identifier, right? So this time I'm not giving 56. I am giving the variable. Okay. So variable V is holding up the information 56. So V is a container inside this container. You have an integer information stored in it, right? So if you check the type of V, so what do you think? What will be the output? I'll be expecting up everyone. What will be the output? I'll be expecting up for now. If I execute type of V, just tell me what you all are getting up. Okay, Shikhar is getting integer, INT. What about others guys? Just execute it quickly, everyone. Uh, 
Arif, Akshay, Devi, everyone, just go ahead and have it up. Dibya is also getting in. Akshay is getting in teacher. That's cool. Okay. So over here, guys, if I execute it up, if you have a look, it is in teacher. Right? Now, it is very interesting thing. If I simply go ahead and change the information as 78.9. Okay? And if I again execute it up, if I have a look on V and now again, I execute my type function. So what you all will be getting up. So over here, guys, if I have a look, it is float. Why? Because earlier it was a whole number, but now it's a number which is having decimal associated with it. Yes. So this is the respective, you can say, the smartness of Python, that Python understand what information will be stored to it. Okay. So if I'll be giving a text, a textual information, right? I'll be giving hello. But hello will be in string format, right? You can see these quotes, right? And now guys, if I have a look on V, so V is having hello over here, right? If I check the type of V for now, what will be the type of V for now, everyone? Can I have your responses? What will be the type of V, data type of V? Okay, string, string, str, str, that's cool, guys. Akshay is also saying str. Okay, so over here, guys, if I simply quickly go ahead and have a look, so it is str. Fine. Now tell me if I don't use these quotes and if I directly give the text. So what you will think, what will be the output that I'll be expecting of for now? Will it be a valid operation? Will, will it be a valid operation? No. So if you execute it up, guys, you all will be having the name error. Why? Because this time, hello is not string, right? It is simply being considered as any of the uh, unidentified information, right? So make sure whenever you are giving any of the textual information, either it will be in single quotes or it will be in double quotes, right? It will for sure be interpreted and you don't have any of the error, right? Okay. Are you all clear with the information guys and how you are defining it into a variable? Everyone? That's cool. Akshay. Okay. Yashwan. Divya. So it is pretty simple guys. Fine. So I hope now you all will be uh, comfortable around this Python environment, right? How the things will be working up and how you will be going and how you will be having all those stuff to be there up. Right. So guys, let me give you one thing more very interesting. Okay. So now you can easily able to get it up. So if I want to execute this cell, right? So let, let's say I'll be giving an multiplication operation 45 multiply 90. So how I can run it up? I can either click on this play button, right? If you don't want to click on this play button, 
so the shortcut that you can use is shift plus enter okay so if you use this key it is a shortcut command to run a cell okay so now there is no need to again again click on this if you are on this cell select it and simply sh press shift plus enter and you will be having an output okay so this is a shortcut command you can try it up later on fine so this is about all the information or the uh, you can say variable you can have now later on you can use these variable to hold your information for an example i'll be creating so variable a a is having this numeric information and b will be having uh, this information okay so now if i want to go ahead and if i want to do anything with these values so i don't need to uh, call them again and again what i can do i can simply call them by their name a plus b right so what a plus b, b will give me a plus b will give me the addition of these two values right so this is the beauty of variables right so with a short thing you can easily able to store any of the information okay are you all getting the concept of variable guys a very basic and fundamental unit of python that's cool shikhar yashwant fine so now guys over here uh, let's do one thing let's quickly go ahead and have a look on some of the arithmetic operation okay so what are the operations we can use in python so there will be some of the operator so the first operator that we have will be the arithmetic operator right it is very important for all of you to understand these things fine so as you know that this summation this is very simple thing very common thing right that you can use this addition operator right like this you can use multiple operator like sub, uh, subtraction okay So what you will be having up you will be having a minus b right so if i don't have variable if i don't have their name so again and again guys i have to call these values yes or no but once i have stored them in these variables whenever i want to do any of the calculation i will be calling their respective names a and b so it will be giving me the subtraction of this right so a minus b so b is greater right it's 8 1976 so that's why i have minus 3302 okay so likewise you can also have the product we have already seen for product what you need to do you need to use an asterisk symbol guys star symbol a multiplied by b just remember it up okay so over here guys this is for the product now many time you all will be having this sort of thing that okay uh, we will be having these arithmetic operation these are very simple right addition subtraction now guys if you want to divide again it is very very important fine so there is a normal division let's say i'll be having two variable x is 9 and y is 2 fine if i need to divide x by y so i'll be using this forward slash this is the symbol of division if you want to do any of the divide in programming language okay so you will be having 
right so this is a normal division guys you can have a look it's normal division okay now apart from this you also have a floor division right so what has happened that you don't want this uh, element after decimal you only want the value before decimal in of uh, in the division process so what you can do you can do the floor division okay have a look over here guys so in floor division what you will be doing up you will be using double forward slash have a look on to these symbols very very important very very important okay so if you have a look over here guys you can see that now you are not able to get this any value after decimal right you only get the integer value are you getting this part division and flow division so it's it's only for mathematical part right many times we don't want to use uh, any decimal value we only want integer value right so in that case we use flow division so this time you don't need to worry about these uh, let how we are doing it into the analytics part right but you need to understand that how these are arithmetic operations are coming into the picture why because arithmetic operations and the logical operators are very very important guys okay are you getting this everyone can i have your responses that's cool yashwan shrikant devi oder so uh, we are not going on to any of the complexity for now it's very simple you can have a look guys very very easy and i hope each one of you can easily able to practice these things that we have done today on python environment assigning a value to a variable then using those respective variable over here right very very important part okay all well for now guys can i have your responses quick responses that's cool so if anyone is having any uh, thing to discuss if anyone is having any of the doubt i'll be giving you a uh, 5 minutes window you can unmute yourself and you can ask it up you can clear any of the doubt and if you find anything complex please let me know why because this is very very basic thing right the operators part we also have uh, other operators logical operators bitwise operators that will be seeing up for now but for sure it is very important to know that how you are assigning up defining up the information how you are going and how you are using it up okay so yes guys just quickly have the responses on to the chat section if you want you can unmute yourself let me know if on any num uh, you can tell me the line number like this okay 7 8 in 19 17 21 where you are having any of the issue yeah uh, hi atarva this is kamal kamal uh, atarva just one small announcement to all students uh, yeah. you know uh, so the same class will be again you know uh, we are going to start from monday okay so monday same timings 10 pm to 9 p uh, 10 pm to 11 pm okay and we have created e learning portal for all students okay we have accepted also the students who newly joined you know they will be getting their e learning portal tomorrow okay and all sessions will be recorded and it is uploaded to e learning portal okay so you can have even materials also will be uploaded if any given by atar okay this is the information what we want to pass it to you so yeah please please thank you thank you atar okay so guys see now you don't need to worry about it i'll be sharing this file on to the chat section so the same thing that i have done you can refer it up okay so what you need to do uh, i'll be downloading this file into ipynb format okay you can see that it has been downloaded now on to the chat section right just have a look on to the chat section everyone i'll be sending up this file okay so from my computer yes okay see are you getting the ipynb file everyone see the chat section right so all the things that i have written over here all the codes along with the output you will be having it up right so i'll be also showing it up uh, if anyone wants to know that how we can 
open this file because directly this file cannot be opened up. So who will be sharing his screen so that I will be able to guide everyone that you need to do this step after downloading the file. Uh, Shikhar, can you do the same? So I want a person who will be sharing his screen so that I, I will be letting everyone to know. Okay, Akshay. Akshay is saying. Just a moment, Akshay. Let me give you uh, the... Yeah, can you share your screen for now? That's cool. Okay. Fine. So Akshay, just do one thing. Just download the file onto, from the chat section and uh, uh, just go on to your respective... Uh, folders where you get the file, right? I think in downloads, you will be getting this file. Is my screen visible? Yeah. So guys, over here, see, this is the file you have. If you click on it, it will not open. Right? So what do you need to do? Uh, Akshay, just go on to your Google Colab. Just go on to your Google Colab. Yes. Right? Yeah. Go on to your Google Colab. Yes. So over here, guys, click on file, click on file. Yes. Click on upload notebook. You all needs to update. Yeah. Click on browse. And see, click on this IP van B file, click on open. Click on OK once. Just, uh, I think you have uh, occupied your Google Drive. Uh, Akshay, just delete some file from your Google Drive, please. Okay. Because your drive is full. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, guys, you, you will be having the same thing. Just click on browse and your file will be opened up, right? Right? The same way. Okay. So, you can try it up. And you can open the same file that I have shared up you, with you, right? So, once again, I'll be sharing the same onto the chat section. And here we go. Okay. So, you can download the same from the chat section, guys. I hope everyone is clear with all the things. Hi, Shikhar. Yeah, please. You can ask it up. Sir, I was asking, I have also noted the things the way which you have done. So can I access this thing later on? Yes, for sure, Shikhar. Right? Yes, can can you tell me how? Yes? yes? Sir, can you tell me how? Yeah, so Shikhar, see over here, uh, you will be having the recorded sessions as well as I'll be giving you the uh, this Google Colab uh, link, right? For now, it was on my work platform, so I cannot share the link directly with you, right? Later on, I'll be sharing the link uh, to you, right? And you can directly access and you can see, you can even collaborate, same onto the Google Colab. That is the beauty of Google Colab, okay? No, sir. I was saying I have made my notes on myself on the Google Colab the same way which you have did. So can I access my things later on? Or do yes. I need to download this thing? Please, please, please share your screen. I'll be helping you that how you can access the same thing on Google Colab, right? Because okay. all the things will be uh, uh, stored in your drive. 
So from any system, you can share, uh, access it up. Make sure you have the same Google account. Open it up. Just yeah. uh, close, close these part, close these Google collab so that yeah. you will be able to know how you can access it later on. So this way. Uh, just close these Google collab. Uh, so which one? This thing. Uh, just these tabs. Yeah. So that you don't have anything on your screen, right? Your notes gone. Yes, yes sir. Now you have to access it again. Yes, sir. Just write Google collab. Okay. Yeah. So this link. Yeah. Just click over here. Uh, just you can go ahead and click on open collab. Okay. See on to these recent part. It is on your drive. Okay. So all your yes. files will be available in recent. Okay. sir. Okay. Now you can click on Python demo one. Yeah. And you can have all the things to be there. Up. Okay. Very simple. That's why we use this respective tool in the industry. It is very handy. Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's cool. Okay. Uh, so guys, thanks. That's all from my side for the today. Uh, see you in the next session and we will be going and we will be learning uh, new things, right? And we will be uh, step by step pacing up the speed. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you, guys. Meet you on Monday, same time, 10 p.m. Yeah. Please go to your e-learning portal for recordings. Happy weekend.